The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for the weekly perspective for the week ending for June 2021. Well, as usual, let me start with the stock market and say that uh, markets are still looking strong. Technically, the uh, NASDAQ is leading the market stronger, and today on the 4th, the tech sector looks to be doing pretty good. And uh, the small caps are in a uh, consolidation uh, configuration, and it'll break either up or down wait and see. I do want to comment a bit on Bitcoin. It's um, consolidating and meeting resistance around the 40,000 level after being as high as about 65, bounced off the 30, but it is under its 200 day moving average, which is key for technicians, which means that uh, <clears throat> it's favoring to the downside more than the upside at this point in time. I'll leave it at that. I just want to um, Make note of uh, our landing page here at themorganreport.com. If you haven't already, certainly consider getting on our free list. I will be putting out one of my favorite speculations that was reserved for paid members only in the next few weeks. So if you just put in a first name and an email address here, uh, you will be given a an email to verify that it's you and you really want this, and away you go. So we're on the blog page, and again, I just want to point out a couple of things here. Uh, <clears throat> I put this together last week with the uh, weekly perspective about Wall Street nearing Wall Street silver nearing about a hundred thousand. I will be interviewing the Happy Hawaiian later today, probably to be posted not only on our blog but probably will be posted on the Reddit group as well, and uh, it will be <clears throat> again with Happy Hawaiian, who's basically the who's instrumental basically in starting this whole thing. So that should be very interesting. And lastly, to point out <clears throat> on the blog page, this is a uh, silver and or gold platinum palladium uh, savings program. And the way it works is similar to what Mike Maloney has just started and others have had. And this is basically on the silver side and the gold side, you're basically buying into physical metal on the commercial side. So when you put in a silver investment, you're accumulating parts of a commercial bar. And then when you go to cash out, at that time, you pay the premium. So let's say, for example, you bought a thousand ounce bar, you could take delivery of that and the markup would be practically nil because you'd be paying pretty close to spot. But if you're going to convert it to silver round, silver bar, silver kilo, silver hundred ounce bar, uh, U.S. minted uh, silver coin, Canadian minted, there is going to be a premium, and it varies. And right now, those premiums are extremely high. So it's a good way to accumulate silver near spot and then wait for the premiums to come down. Now, I've been saying that before, and the premiums remain high, and there's no guarantee they will come down, although they are starting to come off in the retail side somewhat. <clears throat> This, of course, I'm an ambassador for the load program. This would be an adjunct to your physical holdings. It is basically a gold and silver backed digital currency. I'm prejudiced. Uh, I've been with it from the inception. I think it's one of the better ones out there, but there are others there and I'll leave it at that. So in the news, first up this week is from Kitco News yesterday, Thursday, Russia's well-funded ditch all U.S. dollar assets for gold, euros, and won this month. Talked about in a couple of recent interviews. It's not like the bank is doing it, but it still is the Russian National Wealth Fund, and we are talking about $40 billion. It's going to be taking all of what they own in dollars, selling them, and moving it into gold, yuan, and euro. So... It is something of note. Further on top of that, uh, Hugo Salinas Price wrote an article about uh, Russia and China and gold. Here is the Hugo Salinas Price article. June 28th, Bank for International Settlements caves in to Russia and China. On April 6th, the website Russia Today made an announcement, and he gives reference to the URL. 
Putin poised to set out vision for future in a dramatic speech and what allies say to be the world's most important political event. So certainly very important coming from their perspective. However, it turned out that Putin did not set out any vision for the future in a dramatic speech and that the world's most important political event did not take place. What's going on? In my opinion, that's in Hugo's opinion, there is only one explanation for this situation. Putin was threatening to restore gold backing for the Russian ruble and the Chinese yuan. And this scared the living daylights out of the Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, which caved into the pressure from Russia and its ally, China. As a result of Putin's threat, this May, the BIS advised it will be implementing new rules to govern international banks regarding the presentation of amounts of gold which they hold, which are no longer to be include unallocated gold. So he's talking about Basel III here. It has been the operations with unallocated gold, i.e. mythical gold, which have allowed the most important banks of Britain and the U.S. to control and suppress the market price for gold. Under the new rules, which are to be presented in full on June 28th of this year, the price of gold will no longer be subject to manipulation on the part of the United States and the United Kingdom because the most important banks of these countries will no longer be able to count on unallocated, i.e. non-existent gold for the collusion regarding price control of the metal. Russia and its ally, China, have thus canceled the power of the U.S. and U.K. to keep the price of gold, quote, deep in deep freeze, end quote, for so many years. Nobody knows how high the price of gold will be after June 28th, but the higher it goes, the lower it goes the international value of the dollar and of other national currencies that are linked to the dollar through the concentration of their reserves in dollars. The enormous U.S. imports of Chinese good will have to fall to a trickle and that reduction result of a return to economic reality will decimate the standard of living of Americans. A new age imposed by Russia and China will begin June 28th as gold regains its old function as money. So there you have it. Uh, somewhat, I'm going to remain a bit neutral on this. I don't know exactly what the Basel III repercussions will be. There's kind of two sides of the story. One is that it's going to be so significant that it's going to change everything from that point forward. On the other side, there's people that think that it's pretty much baked into the price. It will probably drop some banks out of the gold trading desk. It could clear up uh, some of this unallocated stuff that's out there being counted and hypothecated and rehypothecated. So it'll be interesting to find out what happens after June 28th. I'm going to remain neutral. I'm more in the camp of it's not going to have a significant effect on the price of gold immediately, but time will tell. And switching topics, this is from a CNBC. CEOs need to prepare now for exponential increase in ransomware attacks, top Department of Justice official says. A top Justice <clears throat> Department official warned that the U.S. business leaders need to do more to prepare for an onslaught of ransomware attacks being carried out by states and criminal groups overseas. This is something that I've been addressing in the Morgan Report for quite some time. I've done it uh, on a few interviews. But uh, the vulnerability on the web is more, uh, there's more availability to hack things than most people believe. They think they have the right software to protect themselves. They've got a firewall and all this stuff. And almost all of that stuff can be hacked if the hackers are sophisticated enough, have enough tools, and enough time. So it's a battle between the two, those that are protecting uh, sensitive data, websites, servers, etc., and those that are wishing to produce um, problems by hacking. So I won't read the whole article. I do think it's, I think she's right. I do believe that you're going to see more and more of this. It talks about, of course, the Colonial Pipeline and, of course, the current JBS, the largest meat packer in the world, both being affected by 
ransomware attacks and more to come and i believe that's true so be advised uh, if you, on a personal level, I consider what I do, backing up on a hard drive that's detachable from my computer, and of course I can use memory sticks as well, but I back up two different locations on hard drives that again are removable so they can be separated from, from the web totally. And that's just a personal level. I'm not suggesting that for industry, although something along those ideas might be worth considering. From Zero Hedge, usually feature them almost every uh, weekly perspective. Why consumer price inflation is here to stay? Of course, there's a back and forth on inflation, deflation, stagflation, you name it. This is very much uh, worth reading. I won't read it to you, but uh, the bottom line here, the ability of U.S. central planners to export price inflation to China is finally breaking down. The ability masks the effect of loose fiscal and monetary policies in the U.S. for several decades as the consequences of enormous deficits and radical money supply expansion were offset by low-cost consumer goods. Those days are over. Something to consider. <clears throat> Wish everyone a great weekend. Uh, gold has made a breakout, <clears throat> got pounded on Thursday. It's working its way back today. Silver also got pounded on Thursday, down almost a dollar at one point. But it's sneaking up above 28 as I speak. And the metals are certainly looking very strong, especially vis-a-vis uh, -vis the commitment of traders. That is not that favorable for either metal. It's slightly more favorable to gold and silver at this point. But I can't get the data for this week until next Tuesday to have a look. Regardless, um, make a great weekend. I'll be back with you next week. This is David Morgan of the Morgan